Imagine a what-if situation. Kim Jong-un backed into a corner. North Korea crumbling with an ongoing war. The US possibly threatening with tactical nukes. With nothing to lose, Kim launches an all-out preemptive nuclear strike. Following decades of work which started in the 1980s, North Korea developed many kinds of ballistic missiles with increasing range but uncertain reliability. It added nuclear weapons to their arsenal. Today, North Korea could be a fairly potent threat to the US. What if their leadership tried to use the country's arsenal against the US cities and forces? Could the US defend itself and her interests from a nuclear attack? Defending from ballistic missiles takes a lot of cutting-edge technology. Thankfully, defending oneself from being eavesdropped on is much more accessible. I use NordVPN when going online, and yes, this video is sponsored by NordVPN, but I do often have to research sensitive stuff. I don't want someone picking up on my connection looking at what traffic goes to my computer. NordVPN protects your data with military-grade encryption, and all traffic is routed via one of 5300 servers they offer. You pick a server and a country for better speed or to simulate a different geolocation. When traveling, you can access your US video streaming content, for example. You install NordVPN on your computer or mobile device, and that's it. One click for first connection, and from then on I don't even have to think about it. Even Android TV supports it. And NordVPN has a special offer for Binkov viewers. Go to nordvpn.com slash Binkov and use the code Binkov to get a two-year plan with a huge discount, and one extra month for free or simply click below. If anonymity is important to you, do give it a try. The leaders of North Korea made a significant effort to make the country a nuclear power. They progressed fairly quickly from their first nuclear test in 2006. In 2017, they claimed they tested a thermonuclear weapon. Western analysis of the test seismic data estimated the explosion yield was 250 kilotons. Japanese and South Korean intelligence officers claim North Korea has successfully produced miniaturized warheads and is capable of mating them to ballistic missiles. The latter is crucial because a nuclear device is worthless without a useful and reliable delivery device. This can be an airplane with a bomb, a subsonic terrain following cruise missile, but the best platform is a ballistic missile. Of course, ballistic missiles can differ when it comes to range, payload or other features. The main factors of ballistic missile defense against North Korea would be the following. Location of the North Korean missile sites, location of targets, missile range and trajectory, quantity and reliability of ballistic missiles, location of the ABM sites and their assets, number of the anti-ballistic interceptor missiles, the maximum engagement range, lateral interception reach of the system, and interceptor's missiles hit probability. It must be underlined that many of these factors can only be estimated. The point of this video is to evaluate the North Korean threat, and US options to defend from said threat. Before we get to the big missiles, let's mention that North Korea currently has only a single small diesel submarine, the Simpo, which can carry only one ballistic missile. The submarine is similar to 1960s Soviet-class submarines. The North Korean Air Force does not have planes which can reach beyond South Korea. Against the continental United States, only land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles with a range of 5,000 miles or more can be considered a threat. Seattle is a US city of half a million people closest to North Korea. To reach California and the Great Lakes, a missile with a range of over 6,000 miles is needed. The US East Coast is even farther, at some 7,000 miles. Since the late 1980s, North Korea has developed many types of ballistic missiles, but it was only in the 2010s that first intercontinental capable missiles appeared. The Hwasong-13 missile was seen for the first time at a military parade in 2012. In 2016, Korea performed two launch tests, but both attempts failed, according to Western intelligence agencies. In 2017, the Hwasong-14 missile was tested, twice. The launched missiles reached an apogee of up to 2300 miles. That means the estimated range of a flatter flight trajectory is above 6000 miles. The Hwasong-15 missile was tested in 2017. Missile's apogee was 2900 miles. 
so its estimated range is over 8000 miles. This missile can in theory reach any target in the continental United States. Before ICBMs were developed, North Korea had already deployed many shorter range ballistic missiles, but those could reach only South Korea or some US bases in the Pacific. The US base on Guam is some 2200 miles away from North Korea. Hwasong-10 and Hwasong-12 missiles are capable of reaching US bases there. Hwasong-12 was tested five times in 2017. Three of those tests were a success. US Wake Island is at the edge of the estimated range of those missiles. Hawaii was out of range until the arrival of the Hwasong-13 missile. In December 2001, the US announced it would withdraw from the 1972 Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. This opened the door to investment in Homeland Missile Defense System. To understand the geographical issues, let's check the trajectory of ballistic missiles trying to reach targets in the continental US. North Korea is small, so the trajectories are mostly similar, even if they aim for different targets in the US. The zone of incoming ballistic missiles is restricted compared to cases where missile launch locations can be thousands of miles away from each other. Mid-course interception zone gets progressively smaller as the trajectory point gets closer to the launch location, as opposed to the terminal phase interception zone. The ballistic missiles can be intercepted during boost, post-boost, mid-course and terminal phases. The size of the target differs by type as does its speed. Speed furthermore changes with trajectory and phase of the flight. All that demands different anti-ballistic missile systems at different locations. The diagram shows various US systems, each with different limitations. Due to the location of the North Korean launch sites, boost phase intercept of big missiles is not possible. The sites are simply too far away from South Korea or plausible ship locations near the eastern Korean coast. The THAAD system would be of no use there. Against ICBMs, the Aegis ballistic missile defense system can be useful, but only in the post-boost and in terminal phase. The missile launch platform has to be fairly close to the launch point or the defended area. But deploying the platform near target areas itself would require a lot of ABM sites. Unmanageable number really, as there are too many potential targets. Talking about post-boost interceptions, while South Korea is relatively close to the North Korean launch sites, the ICBMs fly away from the Korean peninsula. That means the Aegis BMD has to be ship-based to get as close to possible missile launch points as possible. Against a salvo, this means two or three ships with the necessary missiles and radar. The engagement can be performed three ways. The first method is solely the ship using its SPY radar for target acquisition and tracking for the SM-3 interceptor missile. The first SM-3 Block 1A missile entered service in 2005. The second method is launch on remote mode. In this case an off-board sensor detects and tracks the target, providing more time to launch the missile. The SM-3 missile can be launched even before the ship's own SPY radar can perform the track. This provides better reaction time for the missile. This capability was reached in 2010. The third method is engage on remote mode. The ship there serves only as a launch platform. It does not have to have even a radar, as it relies only on third-party tracking. Aegis BMD reached this capability in 2015. For the last two methods, many assets can be used. A vestige of the Cold War, the Cobra Dane radar at the Aleutian Islands is just in the right place for that. The radar was originally built to monitor Soviet ballistic missile tests. The radar has a 120 degree scan zone in azimuth and a range of some 2000 miles. This means it can track climbing missiles launched by North Korea. Also another radar platform, the relocatable sea-based SBX-1, can be positioned to provide continuous target tracking for the interceptor missiles. So far only a single such platform has been produced. The satellites such as the space-based infrared system and the space tracking and surveillance system can also be used for initial tracking. The role of the STSS is tracking missiles during every phase of flight, as well as discriminating between warheads and decoys. 
STSS constellation consists of two demonstration satellites orbiting at an altitude of 800 miles. Satellites were launched in 2009. The first SBIRS satellite was launched in 2011, with six more launched by 2021. These assets use either geostationary or high-altitude heliocentric orbits, and are useful for detecting launches at the earliest possible moment. They do lack discrimination capabilities of lower-altitude satellites. The Aegis BMD system was introduced in 2005 with the SM-3 Block 1 missile. The SM-3 missiles have three stages, sharing the first two stages of the cancelled SM-2 Block 4. The kill vehicle is the fourth stage. The interceptors are launched from the Mark 41 vertical launch system on Burke-class destroyers, Ticonderoga-class cruisers or Aegis ashore systems. The kill vehicle of the SM-3 combines a kinetic warhead with an infrared seeker for target discrimination. The seeker provides control input to the thrusters, so they can maneuver the kill vehicle. The Block 1B received improved target discrimination capability thanks to the improved dual-band seeker and signal processor. This variant was deployed in 2014. The Block 2A variant got the new second and third stage. Missile diameter was increased from 13 to 21 inches, thus longer range and greater acceleration were achieved. The first successful interception happened in October 2018. The first hit against a simulated ICBM happened in November 2020. The Block 2A missile is ready for production, but it has not yet been fielded. By the end of this year, the plan is to field 48 Aegis ships capable of using SM-3 missiles. By 2020, over 400 SM-3 missiles have been delivered to the US and Japan. North Korean missiles going after the continental US could also be intercepted mid-course. For this purpose, the ground-based mid-course defense system was developed. The GMD architecture emerged from the development of the National Missile Defense Program in the mid-90s. The GMD is designed to counter long-range ballistic missiles, which threatened continental US. It uses a large 21-ton three-stage ground-based interceptor missile. This design provides quick acceleration and long range, enabling intercepts over great distances, even if the target doesn't even come near the GBI launch position. The GMD can defend the continental US and Canada, but only against missiles launched from North Korea and China. Launches from another direction, like Russian missiles going after the US eastern coast, cannot be intercepted. Thanks to the large and fast GBI missile, Full defensive coverage of the US can be achieved with just a few missile launch sites. If target detection happens early enough, the missile can intercept North Korean ballistic missiles even in case of interception trajectory perpendicular to the incoming ICBM trajectory. Tests between 2006 and 2010 demonstrated the feasibility of that concept. FTG flight tests 2, 3A and 5 saw interceptor missiles launched from California. Interceptor missiles hit their targets about 900 miles away, even though they flew a trajectory perpendicular to the threat missile path. During the FTG-5 test, the SBX-1C based platform was used for target tracking. In 2010, the FTG-6A test partially proved long-reach engagement capability against incoming targets of very long range. While the targets were not always hit in further tests, Due to various issues, the system proved that the missile can go within intercept range in time. The FTG-15 test was finally successful. The missile intercepted the target from 2100 miles away, being fired from Vandenberg Air Force Base. Most GBI missiles are deployed at Fort Greeley Base in Alaska. Target tracking radar is an Air Force Base clear, also in Alaska. GMD can also use data gathered by the satellites and other radars, including the Cobra Dane and the SBX-1. The whole concept is viable because of North Korea's small size, which restricts the trajectory of the ICBMs, as well as due to the very limited quantity of their ICBMs. If hundreds of warheads would be arriving from multiple directions, like in a scenario against a Russian attack, such an anti-ICBM shield would not work. Until this day, 
44 GBIs have been deployed in Alaska and California. Assessing just how many ballistic missiles does North Korea have deployed is not easy. Hwasong-10, which boasts a range of 2500 miles, has a wide spectrum of estimated inventory. Some sources claim 200 missiles have been deployed. Other sources claim only a dozen have been manufactured so far. But even if the higher number was true, only very few would have nuclear warheads available. Various Western sources do sort of agree on a rough figure of nuclear warheads available to North Korea. In 2020, a Swedish Cypri Institute claimed North Korea has 30 to 40 nuclear warheads, and that it added 10 warheads from 2019 to 2020. In 2020, the Federation of American Scientists said North Korea possesses 35 nuclear warheads. And the Nuclear Control Association has in 2020 said North Korea can produce enough fissile material to add 6 to 7 nuclear warheads each year. At the extreme end of estimates, in 2017, the US Defense Intelligence Agency said North Korea may possess up to 60 nuclear warheads. It is likely some, if not at least half of the Korean nuke arsenal are mated to tactical missiles targeting areas in South Korea. Hwasong-13, 14 and 15 ICBMs are far more expensive, and likely only some are available. Indeed, it doesn't make sense to build more ICBMs than there are nuke warheads available, after some tactical missiles have received warheads. Judging by the actions of the US and the deployed quantity of its ABM missiles, it also doesn't seem likely North Korea has deployed ICBMs in large numbers yet. Besides warheads, ballistic missiles can also house decoys using the concept of multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles. While North Korea has allegedly recently managed to produce small formed warheads, mastering the MIRV release is yet another hurdle it must cross. So deploying decoys alongside a warhead is still questionable for North Korea. US military bases in Hawaii and the Pacific region must also be defended. Aegis Ashore facility at Kauai became operational in December 2018. The site demonstrated engage on remote capability. The whole system has 24 SM-3 missiles. Before the arrival of the Aegis BMD, the THAAD system was deployed in Hawaii. In Japan, two Aegis BMD Ashore sites were planned but the project was halted. In late 2020, the Japanese government announced plans to build two more Aegis destroyers instead. Since April 2013, Guam has been defended by the THAAD system, but future installation of an Aegis ashore is also pondered. A THAAD battery has 48 missiles, but that number can be expanded to 72. Its missile is much smaller than the other BMD system's missiles, and uses imaging infrared terminal guidance, similar to GMD or Aegis BMD. Its maximum range is estimated to be 125 miles at an altitude of 50 miles, or 12 miles at its maximum altitude of 125 miles. One THAAD battery is currently deployed in South Korea. By 2020, a total of 534 THAAD missiles have been delivered. Judging by the huge and expensive US effort, one can surmise that the shield against North Korean ballistic missile threat should be fairly solid. Against a handful of ballistic missiles with single warheads, the firepower and accuracy should be enough. So far the tests of the Aegis BMD achieved a hit ratio of 80%. GMD's effectiveness is lower at some 50-ish percent. A combination of GMD and Aegis BMD can provide layer defenses as both can in part intercept the same targets. Due to overall number of warheads available, North Korea has likely fewer than 30 ICBMs deployed. If that holds true, the continental US is likely protected by an effective shield. The US bases in the Pacific are threatened with more missiles, but it is unlikely that North Korea can equip all those missiles with nuclear warheads. Against the medium-range ballistic missiles, Aegis BMD fleet and the deployed THAAD units provide quite a formidable shield. If North Korea has over 30 ICBMs, and if it manages to launch them all at once, it is plausible a few missiles might slip past the US defenses and hit some US cities. 
The US BMD system is the world's most capable, but it is still limited in size and capability. It can be effective against North Korean missiles, and to some small extent against Chinese missiles, but would be greatly inefficient against Russian arsenal. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.